Welcome back to another episode of High Technology. Before we feature on the US Navy's most ambitious destroyers that have evolved from small, fast, close-in surface combatants to multi-mission offensive and defensive warships able to operate both independently, in cohort of a strike group and even unmanned, feel free to join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. Without further ado, do, here's a close look of the intriguing development of the US Navy's potent destroyer ships and various other high-tech devices. When you analyze the US Navy's contemporary fleet of ships and fighting equipment, you can see how much it has changed. It has made significant investments and created potent destroyer ships to face both current and upcoming threats. The largest and most advanced guided missile destroyer ever built is the newest ship in the US Navy. The most cutting-edge electric propulsion system, wave-piercing tumble-home hull, stealth design, and cutting-edge combat fighting gear are all features of the ships. The composite superstructure greatly reduces the ship's sonic output and radar cross-selection, making it more challenging for at-sea foes to locate the ship. The US Navy's first program, which was initiated in 1994, was for 32 ships with an estimated cost of $1.3 billion each. The Zumwalt class was intended to succeed the deteriorating Arleigh Burke class destroyers and serves as a super destroyer of the 21st century for the ensuing 50 years. By 2005, however, the cost per ship, which mostly includes stealth technology and superior armament, had climbed to $3 billion, which caused the program to be scaled back to 24 ships, then 16 ships, and finally to 7 ships. The range range of naval surface fires is increased by a factor of 3 with the help of the Zumwalt's class 2 155mm advanced gun systems or AGS, which can fire long-range ground attack projectiles with a range of up to 63 nautical miles. The ship also includes peripheral vertical launch systems that can fire advanced Sea Sparrow missiles, Tomahawk land assault missiles, and vertical launch anti-submarine missiles. The Zumwalt class destroyer's unit cost set a record of $5.9 billion in 2009, exceeding the state budget by 81, which resulted in additional cancellations that brought the program's total number of manufactured ships down to just three. Up to 175 crew members can be accommodated on the 600-foot ship, and they enjoy a stable life at sea. They spend most of their time managing the ship's daily operations while residing in small housing modules. Additionally, a separate cafeteria offering daily freshly prepared meals is available to the crew of the USS Zumwalt. In the extremely difficult and busy land interface, it also uses active and passive sensors as well as a multifunction radar that could conduct aerial surveillance surveillance over land. With a top speed of 33.5 knots, the Zumwalt class destroyer is 610 feet long, 80.7 feet wide, and has a flight deck that is 93% larger than that of an RLA Burke class destroyer. The Arleigh Burke class destroyers which have multi-mission offensive and defense capabilities are comparable to the Zumwalt class. The fighting prowess of this class of destroyers is built upon the Aegis Weapon System or AWS. The advanced anti-aircraft and anti-submarine weapon systems, the Tomahawk Weapon System, the SPY-1D multi-function phased array radar, and the MK-41 vertical launch system make up the AWS. The MK-41 fires directly upwards from cells beneath the ship's deck, eliminating the need to load or target a launcher from above the deck. The RLA Burke class ships are equipped with a 127mm Mark 45 light gun at the bow. The initial 20 rounds are fed by an outloader, providing remote control. However, to maintain the weapon's functionality once these rounds have been expended, an armament loading and handling crew is needed. The RLA Burke class can now rule at sea thanks to these advancements. The RLA Burke class can cruise at over 30 knots in open waters thanks to its gas turbine propulsion and all steel design.
The US Navy though isn't happy to stop at these tough destroyers. Unmanned surface vehicles or USVs are sea craft without an onboard crew that operate amid the waves using variable degrees of autonomy. They go above and beyond to design and run USVs. For instance, the US Navy employs the T-38 Devil Ray USV to offer logistical support in shallow waters. The T-38 USV can carry up to 2.25 tons of payload and can travel at a top speed of 80 knots and a cruise speed of 25 knots. The T-38 unmanned surface vehicle's function becomes crucial to the success of the cargo transportation of the US Navy when taking into account its carrying capacity and speed. The US Navy also operates the Ranger and Nomad, two sizable unmanned surface vehicles that were originally employed for maritime commerce. In addition to the T-38, both of these ships have large open spaces in the back that can be quickly reconfigured to accommodate a variety of payloads and transport them from point A to point B while autonomously abiding by the maritime laws and avoiding other ships. For instance, on September 3, 2021, the Navy used the USV Ranger to launch a shipment of container-sized SMC rockets for testing. In order to manage its growing fleet of autonomous vessels, the US Navy also plans to eventually include other current unmanned platforms into the system of unmanned surface ships, such as the MQ-8 Fire Scout and the MK-25A Stingray Aerial Tanker Drone. The MK-8B Fire Scout is a combat-trained autonomous helicopter system that provides tactical users with real-time target acquisition and reconnaissance data without requiring them to rely on manned aircraft or space-based assets. The US Navy now employs two different Fire Scout models. One of the two, the MQ-8B Fire Scout, has flown for more than 16,600 hours across 6,200 sorties. The MQ-8B has a multi-mode maritime radar integrated by the Navy, and it has been tested with an advanced precision kill weapon system. On the water, the MQ-8B Fire Scout has demonstrated its ability to maneuver close to other piloted aircraft, the Fire Scout MQ-8C. The commercial Bell 407 helicopter, which has produced more than 1,600 airframes and logged more than 4.4 million flying hours, is the basis for the airframe of the MQ-8C Fire Scout, the Navy's newest unmanned helicopter. It can automatically take off and land from any aircraft supporting ship, as well as from both prepared and unprepared landing zone. The MQ-25 Stingray Aerial Tanker Drone, the first operational carrier based on manned aircraft in the world, is another autonomous system owned by the US Defense. The operational capability of this aerial tanker will improve the range of operational capability and force projection of the US Navy's carrier air wing and carrier strike groups. The military, in collaboration with industry partners Boeing and Lockheed Martin, conducted a demonstration with the aircraft on board US USS George H. W. Bush in 2021 to evaluate the MQ-25 system's integration into the carrier environment. It entailed preparing the landing area, joining the catapults, taxiing to the flight deck, and parking. Additionally, information was acquired on deck motion and the impact of wind over deck on the propulsion system and maneuverability. The US Defense Fleet will be better equipped to handle missions in the future after the integration of these autonomous, powerful, and lethal engineers engineering marvels. Do you think this will be the future of US Navy ships? Let's hear what you think in the comment section down below. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more incredible videos like this. This has been High Technology serving you the best and cutting edge contents on the highest form of technology available on the planet. Until then, see you.